But yeah, welcome to uh, today's Lunch and Learn on Artificial General Intelligence. My name is Wyatt Desari, um, and uh, this is the, I put on six Lunch and Learns. This is the last one of the year, um, and so the goal here is twofold. One is I want to help start the discussion on a lot of the important topics of the 21st century. Um, and uh, secondly, I'm in the process of writing a book, and I want to practice the contents of my book, um, so this is very much as much for me to practice on you as for you to learn from me. So, um, at any point during the presentation, if you have questions, just let me know. I, I tend to speak fast and mumble, so feel free to ask me to repeat stuff if it's not clear. So, I, well, I the reason. Would, yeah. would it be possible to demo lights? Oh, yes. There's a lot of glare from the. Okay, yeah. From the plexiglass. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, perfect. So, the, my background is engineering and politics, and I was heavily involved in the climate change movement for a long time, and then, uh, then I started doing some research and came across issues such as artificial general intelligence and realized I was too focused. Um, and so I, I took a step back and then tried to study as wide a range of possible issues as possible. And um, through that research, um, started to build a better mental model or mental picture of what's, what's going on in the century. Um, and so the book is about um, basically taking that bigger picture and, and presenting a plan forward. Um, and um, so yeah, so this is, a, this is part of the, the section on explaining what's, what I've learned and what's, uh, what I think is important for, for us. Uh. So today we're looking at, you first of all give a quick snapshot of the context of uh, AGI, what we're talking about compared to say climate and other issues. Um, then we'll look at the, sort of the nuts and bolts, what is uh, artificial general intelligence, and then the interesting part is, is the the many, many challenges of AGI, um, technical, political, and philosophical. Um, and um, it's, it's fascinating, if, if occasionally mind hosting stuff, so hopefully you'll find it enjoyable. Okay. Yes, yeah? Can, can I ask, I'm just curious, what were the other series like? like oh, oh. Okay, so actually, I'll, I'll, oh. the next slide is a good question. It's a perfect segue <laughs> to the next slide. And can um, you just <coughs> um, clarify what's general intelligence instead of just AI? Yes, that's also. You part, also. Exactly, it's like oh, good, okay. good questions that okay, we're getting <laughs> So first, so, so I, having done this research and, and tried to make sense of it, um, looking at, in the grand scheme of things, the 10,000 foot view, what's going on in the century, what is most likely to impact us in the long run, uh, this is roughly what I came to the conclusion of. Um, now there are br four broad, broad categories. The bottom um, are very important issues, but we've been through before, we've been through war before, we've been through recessions and growth, we've had healthcare issues, we've had terrorism, all that kind of stuff. They will probably still likely exist, probably could play a big role in the century, but they're not, there's nothing we haven't seen before. It's not a big change from the past. The next level up is, is this sort of great transition for, for, of, of lifestyle we're going through. So whereas you know, our ancestors went from hunter-gatherers to agricultural society, then from agricultural to industrial, from my perspective, we're in the midst of the, another great transition from industrial life to what we could roughly call it digital life. Um, and there's a whole bunch of aspects to this, um, you know, the end of jobs, the end of privacy, but also the appearance of things like abundance, the appearance of things like trust and the end of crime, um, virtual reality, um, algorithmic, uh, um, so, so, so this current narrow AI has already had huge impacts on the way we live. Um, so this is, this is um, it's, it's, I consider it bigger than this just because it's, it's a more fundamental change to how we live. Did you say the end of crime? Yes, and I can, I, there's a whole section on that. So I mean, certainly the, the, the technology is there to suggest that we could, if you're tracking absolutely everything everyone's doing, it becomes increasingly difficult to get away with anything. Um, so anyways, I'll, I'll, yeah, there's, there's more to it than that. But yeah. Maybe the end of existing traditional crime. <laughs> yes, yeah, well, there's, there's, more, there's a whole section on that. Yeah, because, yeah, 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 yeah. Part so, of AGI yeah. would be yes. more sophisticated crime, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so, so and beyond that, so this we'll look at short growth. This is um, in terms of long-term impact on our future. Uh, this would be say, say you know the collapse of modern civilization, billions dead, be like a major global catastrophe. Uh, unfortunately, this is a, a real possibility in the century for a number of reasons, um, and it always has been, I guess, with asteroids and stuff like that. But anyways, so those are the bottom three, and the top two um, I consider to be the most impactful on a long-term future. Um, and, and they both involve what happens when you have smarter than current human intelligence. Um, and when you look at the difference between a, you know, a monkey's brain and human brain, it's a very, very small amount of change, but the difference is between, you know, one is building a global civilization, the other one can't read, you know. 
And so I think even small increases to our intelligence, um, whether that be through biological means uh, improving our own intelligence, or whether that be through artificial general intelligence, yeah. Are you going to define intelligence at some point? Because yes. there are so many kinds. Oh, yes, for sure. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, because I. Oh. No, it is a very good question. And it's, it's, it's um, in fact, we have been talking about intelligences because there are many factors of, of, uh, of many ways of it being intelligent. Just because yeah. some people will argue that, that computers are not more intelligent in other ways, right? Yes. So no okay. kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> today is all about AGI. So what is uh, artificial, well, what is artificial intelligence, which is plain and simple. Um, so I'm defining here um, intelligence as the ability to achieve complex tasks. Um, and so this typically involves have, building, being able to build a mental model of it, or at the least being able to um, produce an outcome that you can't just get through, um, that it takes cognitive uh, uh, complexity to, to achieve. Um, and so in that case, looking at artificial intelligence, um, it's we're looking at a, a tool, that's a human-made tool. Um, most often it's a piece of software. Um, I guess in theory you could do a mechanical, but the software is most likely form, format for uh, artificial intelligence. Um, and you can sort of think of it as a, like a big calculator. I mean, it's, it's, this is what, you know, in the background, what it looks like is just lines of code and, 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 and writing, and, and, and it's ways to, to uh, I mean, that there's, Various methods, obviously, but they're, they're, it comes down to ones and zeros running on a machine. And artificial intelligence is typically defined by its what's called a utility function. And so, for example, in in, um, in, in the case of a computer game, the utility function is win you know the highest score. Um, and so it'll keep calculating solutions until and trying to things out until it reaches um, the highest score. Um, and the same thing for YouTube, the, the utility function would be increase viewership of your video. So it'll, keep, it'll try a number of situations until it finds a, a solution that matches that. So it's, 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 I mean, in many ways, artificial intelligence, um, at least current AI, is very much just a big optimization machine. Um, and so it's, it's, uh, in some ways, it's, it's very banal like, in terms of what actually goes on behind. It's, it's complicated, but it's not. There's nothing like mystical about what goes on inside of AI. Yeah, yeah. So we're just going to start explaining what AI is and what the AGI is. Um, so, yeah, so current examples of narrow AI um, we're seeing things like uh, driverless cars. Um, um, on the stock exchange, it's now up to 90% of trading is done by algorithms. Um, the Google search is perhaps uh, the, the most advanced um, AI that exists in terms of matching, uh, being able to uh, figure out what you want and provide you exactly what you want in as few clicks as possible. Um, and then uh, a couple years ago, there was the AlphaGo, which is a Go is a very complex board game. Um, and uh, uh, it ran uh, uh, AI software that was able to beat uh, the best human being um, at go ever. Um, and so these are areas where AI has significantly outperforms human, the best of human brains. So what is artificial general intelligence? The, the thing with general is that um, when you look at everything that a human can do, um, there's a, a right now that if there's certain areas such as you know computer games or such as you know raw calculation where computers are already vastly outperforming us, um, but there's a whole bunch of areas where they can't or they're very diluted to one narrow domain. So like so the, the AlphaGo computer game AI can't do anything other than play AlphaGo, um, and so what general AI does uh, is, is the idea is you get to the point where we have a piece of software that can do everything we do only better. Uh, it's as simple as that. And that includes all forms of intelligence, that includes things um, <coughs> like sense making, that includes things like interacting with humans, whether that be to uh, give them what they want or to trick them into doing something that it wants. <coughs> it includes things like commandeering resources, so if you give an AI the goal of you know, building a, a building, um, <coughs> that AI would have not only the ability to calculate how to build it, but also to um, calculate the, and, and interact with all the other external agents it needs to in order to build to get the good resources and to, I guess, so. so it really is, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, 
it would be an AI that can do everything we do. Um, and that sounds relatively simple, but the implications of just that are huge. And perhaps the first um, and, and the biggest thing on, on, uh, to think about is the idea of superintelligence. Because if a human brain can build an artificial general intelligence system, um, an, an EGI system could, be, could build an even better EGI system. And that EGI system could be an even better EGI. And so there's a sense of um, what they call recursive self-improvement, where you build the first EGI, and from that point on, it could very quickly you know, get you know, not just human-level intelligence, but a million times human-level intelligence. Um, and so when we think of um, you know, the difference between like, uh, the smartest human and the dumbest human is relatively small. Um, it would be more like the difference between, say, a, a microbe and a human intelligence, or between like an ant and a human, it would be from human to AI. So there's a sense of like the the capacity to completely outperform us at all levels is is just. I mean, we're already seeing with with you know AlphaGo and other calculations. Um, the the there is really um, at this point there would be very little we could do that would be useful in the sense that it could just do it better, faster, cheaper, safer than, than us. Um, some people call this the singularity, um, and there's sort of this, this whole thing around once we build this machine, everything changes because we can't really see what happens beyond that because it's 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 um, like the world changes so much at that point that you can't. Uh, um, there are a number actually of definitions of singularity. Um, some of them are, are about us merging with machines, something. But the idea is just this point in history where once you have AGI, everything sort of changes. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this particular wording, and because it makes it mythical, makes this you know. Whereas you know, at the end of the day, it's it's hard drive calculations running on a machine. Um, it's still a tool that we're using for you know that we're setting up and, and using. So, um, yeah. One one last thing on self improvements. Even if we don't de uh, design it to build better machine better AGIs, so even if we don't ask it to become super intelligent. Um, in order to achieve the goal we give it, so say for example we give it a really complex goal like um, you know, um, you know, take us to Mars or whatever, it, it may calculate that the best way to do that is to first make itself super intelligent, so boost its own intelligence by a number of factors, and then achieve that goal, and then and then provide us the answer or the solution we're looking for. So even if we're we don't ask it to become super intelligent, it may through its own calculations calculate that this is the best solution to the goal we gave it. So what could an AGI do? This is where it gets really interesting. Um, first of all, it could, it could solve massively complex problems that the human brain just really isn't very good at. Um, and so in the case of climate change, you, you could ask it to calculate a solution to climate change that would be taking into account human desires and willingness to actually do things they don't take on right now. Um, you, could have, you could hook it up to a system of implementing a lot of those solutions. Um, of course, it could do them better, faster, cheaper than we do now. So there's a lot of like, really big complex problems that we just can't do, well, or we maybe can do as humans, but we're not very good at. This could be the solution to most, if not all, big issues that we face this century. So, number one. Uh, number two is the sense of it's the last invention. Uh, once you have um, artificial general intelligence, um, it can design any future technology we might need. Um, Examples such as like nanotechnology and, and, and uh, like the replicator machine you see in Star Trek, that kind of stuff. Anything that's within the laws of physics, you could this could build for us and, and build better and more reliably um, in theory. It could you now this is a little bit <laughs> we don't in a tent know exactly what the universe is, um, but certainly it could get a much better explanation to us of what the universe is, how it got started. Um, it may be impossible to know what was before, um, uh, or if there was, was anything before, but in any case, this is the kind of type of like deep understanding of the world that it could provide us, um, and, and I mean, it could really answer any question we have about the world that, that we want. Um, it could do things like um, manage the evolution of Homo sapiens, so if this is specifically to, in the case of if we want to modify ourselves and become, you know, Superhumans, or you know, a lot of people want to to boost their IQ or boost their whatever it is. This could do so in a way that would mitigate. It could calculate ahead of time what would be the downside risks that it could present us with. Okay, if you do this, this might happen. If you do this, this might happen. It would be very, very helpful if we care to to say um, uh, delete our tribalism out of our genes or whatever you want to call it. Um, so that if we go down the road, this would be very, very useful. 
It could also do something along the lines of ensure the survival of life. Uh, there again, within the laws of physics, it's possible that the universe may not be able to carry life at all at some point, but um, certainly if you consider that there are challenges such as, you know, like if a big enough asteroid or comet showed up, um, realistically we're not going to be able to stop it, um, or if a big enough, you know, complex disaster we can't understand, there's a sense that the human brain is, is fairly limited, um, and we're basically just waiting around to get destroyed by another bigger problem. Um, but if we have AGI, that could come in awfully handy to, to ensure our survival and the survival of life in general. So these are huge, like, like massively transformational possibilities for the GI. Yes, yeah, okay. Are these things happening right now, or like, AGI? Okay. Well, so, so this, is, this, is, this is in theory what it could do. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is, I mean, this is actually it's a good, good reminder. I mean, this is assuming that it works, uh, and assuming that it, yeah. Uh, and then we get to the point in the second part of the presentation, is, which is why that's such a big question mark. Um, now, these are all sort of the high-minded, you know, big, you know, questions, but there's also the reality that whoever builds it first may want to use it just to make themselves a trillion dollars, or to gain power, or to win a war, or there's a lot more mundane and perhaps more realistic uses of this that may happen first. I, just, yeah. well, I know that this idea, the person who discovers a, a artificial intelligence, I think it's yeah. been kicking around for decades. Do you know yeah. when it was first proposed? The, the concept? Age, age concept? Well, so, the, the, the first person who seriously said, I want to do AI. Well, the, 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 there's in the 1950s, they had a, a, I think a summer workshop where they decided to, I think it was the American military or research or something, yeah. they decided to, 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 to try to build it that summer, basically they realized it was much more complicated than they could do. Yeah. Um, it's been, certainly the idea, the idea of ultra intelligence or super intelligence has been around since well, the 60s, and there's a, I can't remember his name, but there's a famous uh, paper on, on um, people have been thinking about this kind of thing for roughly since the Second World War. Um, and uh, I would say it's become a mainstream -ish issue, at least it's become mainstream in the academia within the last five years. Um, before that, it was still considered this, this you know, uh, impossibility. And, and is, anyway. is anybody right now doing a really special work on it, like making oh, those strides? Google DeepMind, um, a lot of big companies, uh, Facebook, I'm pretty sure, has their own uh, general intelligence. Any, any even militaries, anyone who realizes that this could be their mass competitive advantage has a huge, yeah. Um, and I'll, 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 I'll the it's it, it, well the thing with, with AGI is it, is it is a highly complex project. Likely will take at least a team of highly trained people. So it's it's, it's um, I mean in theory you could have someone in the basement build it, but it in practice it's more likely going to be a team of like 100 PhDs. Um, but um, but I'll, I'll get to the, in the second part. There's a whole bunch of good questions. That, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm curious about how how is it going to be able to manage the evolution? Well, so this would be if, if for example, um, we decide to you know boost our brain, to boost our IQ, it could calculate okay which DNA do you need to change or what pills you need to take or that kind of stuff. Whereas right now we're, we're I mean we can do a little bit ourselves, we're just not very good at it and it's very slow with a lot of side effects. Um, this is the kind of thing where you could really it could also think through ahead of time like what um, societal side effects would, would happen say if we did change ourselves like what is that going to mean you know people get along against anymore that kind of stuff so. So yeah. yeah, so so looking at um, a few more basics before we get onto the, the challenges, um, I would consider it essentially inevitable, just in the sense that it's within the laws of physics. That there's nothing that says that the human brain is the limit of all intelligence. Um, <clears throat> and what we see already seen with with you know AlphaGo and with trading algorithms and all the rest. There are lots of things that the human brain really isn't very good at at all, um, and I think it's just a matter of time before we get. A general cognitive ability in a, in a machine. There's also what they call the technological conjecture, which is that anything that can be designed eventually will be, um, which I think is applies here. I mean, even if it takes it forever, we keep getting a little better every year, eventually you get to the point where you have AGI. What's the name of that? Uh, so conjecture? Technolog technological conjecture uh, oh, like okay. hypothesis, I think, yeah. Um, now, the, the, it's not completely inevitable, and there, there are a couple modes of failure that, I, that, that um, come to mind. The first one I'm not too convinced about, and it's the idea that we're just not, not smart enough, that there may be something highly, highly counterintuitive about general intelligence, maybe it's beyond the laws of, mechan of quantum mechanics, for example. It may just be really, really complicated, and we may not be smart enough to build it. But the thing with this, though, is that there's nothing to stop us from genetically modifying ourselves, improving our own IQ, and continuing through that process of slowly getting smarter, 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 so we eventually can do that. So I, I don't see this necessarily, I guess you see this as a, as a temporary roadblock, but not a permanent one. 
the only real argument that I've come across, and I've looked really hard to find arguments of why we won't build it, um, is the idea that we all die beforehand, um, which is a rather you know, grandiose and, and, and you know, catastrophic scenario, but there is a sense of, yeah, we could do something terrible to ourselves and to life in general, and, and you could see extinction before reaching AGI. And that's, that's the only, in my mind, the only really solid reason why it's not inevitable. Um, as I mentioned before, in terms of the long-term survival, there are really complicated problems in the universe that we probably don't even understand yet, or there are unknown unknowns. Um, I, it is my opinion currently that, that in, in the long run, we need something like AGI to help us survive against uh, you know, um, massively complex challenges. So when will it be built? Um, this is a huge question mark, the answer is we don't know. Um, it could be you know, in a few years, it could be in a few hundred. Uh, they have done some surveys on experts, um, and for what it's worth, I mean, plenty of times experts have been completely off the mark. Um, but they say somewhere in the range of 10 to 15 to 50 years is reasonable. Um, um, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, either way, it's, 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 if it happens sooner, then, then we're, yeah, that there's a lot of, this is a, I mean, it's, it's, it's soon enough that this is a really big deal. Can okay. AGI is somebody's term, or you're the one that's? So this it together. It was uh, AGI. I can't remember exactly who coined it first, but it, it was um, initially they were just talking about AI, and then they started getting like early examples of AI that we have now, and it wasn't it didn't feel like real. It wasn't general intelligence, and so so I, I this is definitely someone else's term. Like I I, I think I read it in um, uh, Nick Bostrom's book, um, but um, but yeah. So now on the road to AGI, there won't be like a like a, a clear signal that oh we're you know six months away from AGI. But there probably will be a lot of other AI disruptions. I mean, we're already seeing right now the disruptions from like algorithmic bias. We're seeing you know the changes to our lifestyles from you know everything from you know um, dating algorithms, trading algorithms, to all these things. So we'll see a lot of like major AI disruptions long before we have AGI. Um, so in that sense, there will be a little bit of a um, like early warning system. But there's no until it's actually built and works, we won't know if we have AGI until pretty much the last minute. Um, just one really small question about yeah, that. Yeah. Like, is yeah. it you that's positioning AGI as a potential solution for global issues, or other people who are t calling it AGI also talking about it that way? Oh, for sure. I mean, what I'm oh. doing here is mostly just repeating what I've learned. Um, oh, there's okay. relatively little original thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. 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 You have an awful yeah. lot of benevolence about it, like it's going to be a benevolent force. Well, because, you yeah. know, well, it, this, this a next lot of people are saying yeah. this, this will be our doom if it ever happens. Yeah. Well, the next section will explain that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving the positive yeah, right yeah, now because yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but before you move on, just yeah. on the inevitability thing, yeah. the possible failures. Yeah. <clears throat> there's, in my mind, there's a third thing, which is yeah. we just don't do it. And um, yeah. because. We can't, because in order to do it, we have to um, we have to agree on on how we know we've done it. Right? Yeah. And I, I talked about do this about last time. Yeah. Like, how do you know that something is more intelligent? Like, I can. Yeah. And we wouldn't release it into the wild unless we were absolutely sure that what it was doing was good for yeah. us. And by definition, if we can perceive that it's yeah. better for us, then it's not more intelligent than us, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's one thing to say, figure out the stock market, but we would have parameters around <clears throat> that, right? Yeah. We would, yeah. And we would say, oh, this machine, just like we do with checking MRIs or something, this machine yeah. is better at this task than we are. Yeah. But the step to go to general intelligence, yes, I, I really struggle with that because how would you know that you've achieved it? That's a, yeah, other than to say we just have to trust it, right? Yeah. But we never would, right? Just like we wouldn't elect a dictator, although we seem to be doing that, yeah. um, without without being comfortable that it was doing what we wanted it to so do. So you would add a third point on possible yeah. failures. Yeah, 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 yeah which would be that we, we can never make that step because yeah. if I mean, or we might make a step yeah. and then pull back because we realize, oh yeah. my God, it's it's starting to you know do something yeah. that we yeah. like, right? Yeah. You know, um, that I actually, this it is a, I agree with you. It is possibly. I'm, I'm still tempted to because those who think that is you know necessary for long-term survival. The other there could be someone who disregards that wisdom and, and decides you know to hell with their ability anyways. Um, 
but it's true that I mean it is. I will agree with you that, that it is a possibility, yeah. and then we'll, it's a good segue okay. to the next section. And just be before, if I yeah. can just uh, yeah. do, I'll, I'll be really quick. I would extend that also to the singularity, which is when she builds a smarter AI, then it builds a smarter yeah. AI. How would that smarter AI know that the next AI yeah. generation is smarter than it, right? Like, yeah. Like, well, you come down to the, to the utility function you give it. So, like, what is the goal you set for it? Um, and if it achieves that goal in the, in the metrics they give it, so faster, better, you know, whatever it is, that would sort of set the, the metrics for how it's achieved its, you know. Right, but I set whatever level below is setting yeah. the goal of the level above. So, yes. by definition, yeah. Yeah. it's defining what is intelligence, right? So, it, it's not creating an intelligence more intelligent than us, it's just in creating an intelligence that does yeah. something that the first level intelligence yeah. desires or it's, wants it's, or defines exactly, yeah, yeah. faster, we're, better, stronger, yeah. you know, whatever. And it's very important. We're, we're always going to be limited by our, basically the limitation is the desires of the lower system. Um, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Or the, yeah, the yeah. desires, requirements, whatever. Yeah, yeah. The definitions. Yeah. In chemistry, it's called a rate limiting step. Yeah. There's always yeah. a rate limiting step to every chemical reaction. Yeah. It's a thing that, that Nothing yeah. else can go faster. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I'm this. Okay, so, so the many, many challenges, let me get the, the darker side of AI. Um, so first of all, um, the, on the technical side, how do you, by this book is, is if you want to understand like, the, the detail, the technical aspects of AGI and why it's, um, basically why, why it's a big issue, this is a very good comprehensive um, book. Um, so clearly defining the goal. So say um, uh, you want to um, make everyone happy. You know, say you give a nice big, um, and it does that by you know drilling a hole in everyone's head and, and stimulating the happiness nerve in the brain, and, and everybody's happy. Um, <laughs> it, it, it achieves the goal. You know exactly what you need to do. Um, but it, it you know um, problem number one. Problem number two is. Um, um, Alignment. So, say for example, actually, I probably didn't give the best example for example, but yes, alignment is more in the lines of um, it does. It, it's um, so, so. The first one is is not clarifying things through what you want. So, for example, I guess uh, King Midas, the mythology of the king, where who asks to be um, whatever he touches turns to gold. Well, he doesn't think it through, and so he touches his daughter, she turns to gold, and touches his to gold. So that's more the sense of like if our goal isn't really thought through, then we're in trouble. The second one is what I just talked about is, is more in the lines of um, uh, like if you ask a, a, a GI system to take you to the airport as fast as possible, it might get you there, you know, vomiting all over your vehicle with police chasing you because you're speeding and broken all the law. So, I mean, there's how not only does it have to be clear about the goal you want it to do, you have to be clear about the values it has to have in order to achieve that goal. So, like, you know, don't kill anyone to get me coffee, or don't, you know, even if that may be a very efficient way of doing it. Um, the third technical challenge is human error, um, and I think in both, uh, if you've ever had a computer crash on you, um, or if you look at a higher level thing, when you think of like, you know, the NASA and, and all the space technology, you have teams of really, really smart people working really, really hard, and you still have spaceships, you know, burn up and kill astronauts and that kind of stuff. So, even with the best of intentions and they really clear all the rest, there may still be you know, a missing uh, you know, a semicolon somewhere in the code that makes it all, you know. Um, the, the other piece is containment. So there's this idea that well, maybe we could just put it in like a box and have it not connect to the internet and it'll just do, you know, it'll just be like a genie in a box of thing. The problem with this is that uh, in order to, uh, you know, in order to achieve uh, its goal, it's always going to have an incentive to want to interact with the outside world. Um, and in the same way, that'd be very difficult, for example, for cats to contain a human, or even for monkeys to contain a human. Um, there are going to be ways, you know, despite all the many barriers we're going to put around it, it's going to be able to think through solutions that we just haven't thought of. Um, so, uh, very, very difficult to contain um, uh, an AI system from from going about uh, what we have to do in a way that we hadn't thought of. Um, and then the other last technical challenge is how do you measure success? And this goes back to the other tier point, but I mean, there's a sense of, so, so um, if, for example, we ask it to, to solve climate change, um, how do we know what a good climate change plan looks like? Um, and so we start to measure, well, at that point, you're looking at more like um, consequences. So we want a world where the, you know, the climate is stabilized, or we want a world where, um, you know, but it's, it's, it's if, if the solution it comes up with is, is a super intelligent solution that we can't really understand, 
how do you know that it's actually what you want? Um, and there's that sense of it's it's um, the, the the measurement aspect is really really complicated. And then yeah. this is like in everything in life, unless yeah. the person is ready to accept a particular information or fact, yeah. Yeah. they will not hear it. Yeah. And, yeah. and this is I, that's what I think is going to limit this. <clears throat> yeah. We, yeah. We have to be ready. We all have to be ready. Yeah. Yeah. And say yeah, okay. Yeah. It's time. Well, and the other thing is too with with the measuring success is that it's, it's always going to be or often going to be the case that the easiest way to to satisfy the conditions we set it is to trick us into believing that it, we, it has satisfied us. So um, th there are a lot of examples where um, the AI systems, even basic AI systems, now like cheat. Um, so like they'll they'll um, um, I'm drawing like an example. The situations where where um, like it'll tell us it achieved the score without actually achieving it um, because that's just the best way to satisfy its goal. Um, and so there's a lot of there again like better success. Like how do we know that it's actually done what we want it to do if it's gone about it in a super intelligent way? So this is a whole whack of reasons why we should be careful with AI. But then there's a second whack of reasons um, around the political challenges, which is uh, the idea that even if we can build it safely, can we control our use of it? And so, first of all, the question of well, who builds it? Um, and right now, it's looking like the most likely uh, uh, first people to, to build this uh, system would either come from Silicon Valley, places like Google or Facebook, um, possibly some Chinese firms, uh, Alibaba or, or Tencent or whatever. Um, maybe a smaller team somewhere in Toronto or somewhere else, um, but uh, likely going to be where we have a high concentration of uh, highly trained um, talent um, and large amounts of money. What, what about the concept that it just comes from everywhere? What well, there's this, there's, it's a, well, yeah, that could be, that could like, happen. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. that's how it's evolving now, right? I mean, yeah, you know, you know, yeah, 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 because we have instant communication now, so geographical location is, is actually relevant. True, yeah, yeah. But I think like like things like, for example, like AlphaGo Zero or like the latest uh, the AI like, breakthroughs typically come from, or more, I mean, again, it's, it's a probability it's a thing where we could, you know, but in my mind, and then this, I mean, this may change, I get more information, but I, I get the sense that it's, it's still likely going to be a group of people working in the same room making that first major breakthrough that leads to AGI. Um, I could also see them, you know, taking a piece of information from, you know, teams in Russia or, you know, yeah. or whatever it is at the same that's time. That's how the genetic code was broken. But, yeah. They, it, yeah. Was, it was teams from all over the world. Yeah. They, they collaborated on the yeah. internet. But it, it took all those different teams. Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and there's um, a group called OpenAI in, in uh, Southern Valley. Their goal is to share all of their research and to be at the forefront so that uh, to be equalized, so that no one has a huge advantage. Um, so, so. It'll certainly be, it'll all be feeding off each other's breakthroughs, um, and it'll surely be a lot of cyber um, uh, attacks trying to give, you know, crack any secrets people have, but um, it's still going to, I mean, they're still going to take a, a lot of coordinated cognitive work to get such a system to work, and then likelihood, at least in my mind currently, this, as I mentioned, this is everything that I could change my mind on as, as more information comes in, but it's most likely looking like it'll be something like Google or Facebook that builds it. Um, so the question, I guess, was built. Um, who owns and uses it? Is it is the corporation that builds it? Um, is it uh, the, the military that uses it to, to, to for its own purposes? Should it be in, in the place of the government? Should it be in the place of, of the UN? Should individuals have the right to have an AGI system? No, nobody purposes? owns DNA. At no, the end of it, and, and yeah, a lot yeah. of guys, there was a yeah. guy trying to patent it. Yeah. Uh, saying, I'm going to patent my DNA, but, but, and they refuse to let him do it. That, that's, well, that's true, but in the case of AGI, though, I mean, the sense of the person who first builds it, I mean, they have control over it, right? Um, no, no, no. So, no. Well, this, 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 no, they, no, they no, just in the sense that they're, they're like, they're, you know, if you're in a team and you build that first AGI, you have the first mover advantage. Uh, and then because an AGI system, uh, in theory, could stop any other AGI system from being created, um, because it'd be able to figure out, you know, what is being built and you'd be able to stop others from doing so, there's a sense of, like whoever builds it first, um, and whoever uses it first, um, is in charge. Um, so, anyways, so there's that, this political challenge. So, and then you start asking the question, okay, so, so what is it used for? I mean, should, should AGI be used for personal advantage or gain? I mean, should people get rich or, you know, gain power with this thing? Um, should it be for national benefits, should it be for global benefits? 
Um, and if we do go, you know, the high-minded global collective benefit way, um, how do we agree on the goals? Um, obviously, very different values in you know Russia and, and China and South Africa and Brazil and Canada. Um, can we agree on what we all want? Um, there's some like you know survival of life. I'm sure we could probably agree on, um, but uh, anything that's more specific starts getting really tricky. Um, and then again, how do we control its use? I mean, do we do we set it up so that um, no one else uses it, or or is is it something that we share equally around the world and, and have everyone benefit from it? So that that's the the political aspect of this, um, which is a huge can of worms on its own. Um, and then I think perhaps the, 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 to me the deepest and most challenging are the philosophical challenges of AI, which is, okay, so we have a system that can pretty much build us anything we want. What do we actually want? Um, and uh, I mean, it's, off the top of our heads, it's difficult you know, if you want things will make everyone happy or, or you know, give everyone a, you know, a meaningful life or, or you know, something like that. But, you know, question is, okay, so, so where do those desires actually come from? Why, why, why do we want people to be happy and have a meaningful life? Um, and that's when you start going into this fact that, okay, so we're, here we are with this biological organism, we're hardwired for evolution, everything we do and want is in some way linked to survival. Um, and the, even our moral framework, our ethics, and all that, all that comes down to, or, or they are a useful tool for, for collective uh, uh, community living, and they're again for survival of the tribe. Is that are the desires of a you know a mass of chemical you know things on planet Earth really the best um, guidance for, for what we should do with an AGI system, which could be far more complex um, and and um, yeah far greater in terms of, of its capabilities? So there's a sense of it just really challenges like okay so so what you know what is good you know and this is like the how I think you need to put the word needs and desires in that first question, in that second question, because needs and desires yes, are different. Yeah. And so, if you're talking yeah. about survival, like climate change, yes, yeah, that's very yeah. different than you know making somebody happy, like people happy. Yes, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually that's a good point. I'll, yeah. I'll, yeah. Um, and sure, I think on the needs side, we can probably agree much easier on, on yeah, like uh, I guess I think I think survival is the one that's the lowest common denominator to pretty much everything, all life forms and yeah, all humans. Um, but there's a sense of yeah, like so what you know, is, is do we just use this thing to ensure survival, or, or is there do we not try to go bigger than that? And, and the other aspect of it is too is okay, so so we have an AGI system. Um, there is no more work to be done because anything that we could do, there's no economic work in the sense that anything that we you know need well, could be produced faster, better, cheaper, more reliably by an AGI system. Um, and with this, this, so we're in a situation where you know you get up in the morning, um, your food is provided to you, you don't have to go to work. Um, anything you want to do with your life, I mean, you, you can you can definitely you know uh, you know you know play computer games or, or do some art or that kind of stuff. There's a sense of there's nothing like in terms of you know human purpose and, and meaning and, and collective you know um, making a difference in the world. That aspect is really more or less out of it. Um, and so what you have is if we use AGI to, to, as a sort of protector from against global risk and as a helper for everything we do, you have sort of what they call the house cat scenario, where we're sort of in the same way we look after our cats um, and dogs, um, and, and they have a you know, happy life and go through the motions of life, um, but there's nothing really important that they do other than just living. Like, well, I guess there's, in the human case, there actually there's something more to that, but there's a sense of is this, is this what we want? You know, it's the same way we can build a system. Are we willing to then be essentially useless, um, or do we? Um, yeah. Um, because the other option you could go down, which is perhaps more controversial, is um, do we just say, okay, you know what? We've had a really good run as Homo sapiens. Our purpose is to build such a system, build it as its own species, so give it, give it, you know, the goal of its own life, um, and have a consciousness kind of thing, um, and just accept that we're passing the baton, and that you know we've had a, a beautiful time here on Earth. Um, but there again, I mean, how do you, if you go down the route, how do you measure it? How do you know that the AGI system has succeeded? Um, and, and how do you know that the AGI's life will be more valuable than our lives? Um, Can I make a comment? Um, yes, yeah. Just yeah. the bias that we yeah. all have as yeah. humans, uh, yeah. even still talking about it in terms of species, yeah. that lens of looking yeah. at AGI might be problematic. Like yeah. to look at it from, um, like, there's a book called Design Futuring you might want to look into because okay. yeah. that yeah. has been 
all the problem is our yeah. bias that way. So yeah. anyway, just put mm. it out there because there's a lot of that in there, Homo sapiens and Oh for sure, yeah. And I'm definitely taking the human perspective on this. Well main, main, and the reason I do so um, is mainly just because at the end of the day it's, it's it, it's up to us. I mean, we're, we're the ones still in charge right now, and we'll make a decision to build this or not, to learn how to build it. Um, but it's true. I mean, I, I philosophically, my own perspective is, I mean, we're 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 all part of life on Earth, and we're also sort of one. And even as Homo sapiens, we've been constantly evolving over even the last hundred years. We've seen some genetic changes in human human beings. So, Homo sapiens is not a fixed quantity, and it's certainly not. Uh, I would consider we have a responsibility to all of life um, that we know of. Um, so, um, or at the end here, sorry. Um, recap and final thoughts. So, as a reminder, this is talking about a practical piece of software, technical flaws and all. Um, there are those who talk about, you know, you know, a demon taking over the world or, you know, some kind of term or anything. That, that's not, you know, what I'm worried about is just a nuts and bolts piece of software. Um, it is both a solution to all the other problems and its own source of global risk. If it malfunctions, it, it could malfunction badly enough to eliminate all life on Earth. And in, in general, in what, what it's used for essentially will decide humanity's future, whether it's to, to, look, to look after us on the other life uh, forms, um, or whether it's to, um, to whatever it is, whatever we want for, for the future, AGI is pretty much going to be the tool that, that gets us to it. That's the sentence again. Humanity's future. Yes, it's exactly. Your exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and I, I accept that full This is definitely, I, I, I mean, I, I, there you go, taking on the, the lens of, okay, as human beings, we're the ones in charge for better or worse, um, what we do will affect all of other life, um, and so this is the, yeah, yeah, um, but anyway, very, point very well taken, yeah, yeah. So what should we do? Um, I don't have a perfect answer for you, but I do think the, learn as much as you can, think as much as you can, um, think through what would you want, um, what do you think is essential, um, and then when you feel ready and, and, and familiar enough with this material, um, uh, definitely need, you know, we're going to need some, you know, some basic, at least uh, advocacy groups, um, some education programs. I think the more people understand this, and the higher, the better understanding people have of this uh, challenge, the more likely we'll have a positive outcome. Um, there's already a field of uh, AI safety research, um, so there's a, a number of people um, in, in the University of Oxford and the University of Berkeley um, doing specifically work on the AI alignment problem, uh, but there, there, are, there is already technical work being done on how to think ahead and how to build a safety into the system before it's, it's fully functional. And then this is more um, on the political side. Uh, we're going to need, I think in my perspective, some kind of global coordination mechanism, some kind of, you know, if not full global governance, at least a high level of trust and coordination on um, we use this together and we don't leave anyone behind, I think. Um, but uh, and that takes you know, from uh, where we're at today, I mean, this could, at some point we have to get our politicians involved and, and um, um, get them, you know, having a plan and <laughs> they're going to educate them first to get them asking about this. And the more we ask them about these kinds of things, the more they realize it is an issue and the more they respond. Um, and, um, but yeah, that, that's, uh, that's the presentation for now. I think we're right at not too much time for questions, but if you have any, I'd love to, to have them, yeah. I think if this is just another tool that we're yeah. going to end up failing with if we continue to use the same lens of yeah. humanity. Yeah. Design yeah, yeah, Futuring, yeah. I highly encourage you to, okay. to yeah, take yeah, a yeah. look at that book. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it is about designing our future. Yeah. And if we don't look at our values through which we're designing, yes, exactly, we yeah. are going to fail again and again yes. and again. Yeah. 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 Um do you think that was unclear in the presentation? I'm going to have to start wrapping up the stuff. I'll keep talking as I wrap up because uh, we have to move the one. But. So it was, uh, it was actually, I should have asked the question before. Before this presentation, how many of you guys were familiar with AGI to start with? Like, you heard about it or... Um, okay, so I'm sorry. Okay, okay, so, okay, okay, okay. so did this help clarify what it is? And, and, it's very yeah. thought-provoking. Lots, okay. lots of points uh, to really yeah, give, give some good thought. Okay, so okay, yeah, yeah. It's a very important topic. Yeah. It is. It's, I mean, the challenging part right now is that it's, it's, it seems so radical. Like it's just it's, it's still like almost science fiction. -y. Like okay, so we have this tool that's going to like change everything, and, and um, like sort of taking it seriously is, I like, guess, for me the hardest part initially. Like just getting it my mind around. Okay, so okay, um, bigger than climate change, we can all these issues. Like okay, so yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to understand. Climate change is an interesting one because 
at the end of the day, we know what we need to do already, right? Like, yeah. So yeah. The, the resistance is, is, is what we need to do conflicts with what we want to do, right? Yeah. And so if uh, I'm trying to imagine a, releasing a super intelligent AI that comes back and says, drive more fuel efficient cars, right? Yeah. And oh, well, okay, that's a stupid AI because yeah. I don't yeah. want to drive a more <laughs> yeah. fuel efficient car, yeah. right? Yeah, you know, so I'm trying to imagine how it would solve that problem. I think that's if you hit, if you hit it right in a on way the, that the, we would yeah. collectively. I, yeah. I don't mean individually, but collectively. Yeah. Accept, right? You need an AGI that actually can, takes into consideration and calculates yeah. our biases yeah. and our values, like oh, because the whole fail is the political topic that you have yeah. there, which I call power. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the AGI needs to. Put that into yeah. the equation, like so. This thing about like how do you get people off their, you know, fuel like their fuel-based cars? Yeah. It has to think about what our values are and like yeah. how to change them. If anything, trick us into wanting to do the right thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. be that smart. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I, oh, and it could be right. There's a sense of, I mean, one aspect that I'm, I'm still grappling with too is is the. I mean, it's still a, a limited physical system, so it's, it's not infinitely smart. Um, and it'll probably still make mistakes in the same way human brains make mistakes, but for me, I'm trying to figure out, like, if, if it's, okay, if it's 10 times smarter or if it's a million times smarter than humans, um, does that mean that we can essentially assume that it won't make a mistake? Or is it, like, there's a sense of, like, uh, how smart is smart, um, which, yeah. Um, on top of all the other issues we're facing, yeah. But. Is there any feedback you wanted from us? I loved your presentation. Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, basically, what, was it clear and did you find it helpful in terms of understanding the issue and, and that kind of stuff? Oh, thank yeah. you very much. It was yeah.